kind of brutal <laughs> to be drinking salt and sugar fucking energy drink, basically. It's what energy drink's made out of. 30 grams of salt, 1 gram of sugar, chuck it into a water, into a 500ml water bottle. That's what sport like a Lucasade is. And if you put it in orange, it tastes like a Lucasade. Almost. Exactly. Top tips from Craven. If you're doing sporting events. Craven tech tips. If your tech is yourself. Dash Scholar. So let's see how this car performs. Is this another Group 4 BMW or what is this car? Real life. That's quite nice actually. I also like that. And that. Audi. Must be an Audi. Because it's that co those colours are Audi's colours, aren't they? Seats substitute for recliners for reading light line digits to replace interesting stages, purple with diesel, crank stuff and light Let's have a look actually. Uh with the uh, art of rally cars. It's an Opal Scona. Huh. Apparently those are Opal's colours. There was some talk about this car being actually kind of almost meta when the, when it first came out, so I'm hoping that it's pretty fast. There was some talk and then there were, there were people saying oh, it's good for new players but it probably won't be there at the top, but the thing with that is it's like... I saw a few of the top players comparing it and going, oh no, it's not as good. And it's like, well, you've had like five years of playing with Das Whip, and everyone plays Group 4. Like, that's one of the biggest classes. So, what the fuck? So, hopefully, this is a pretty good car because Germany is. Germany's been pretty brutal to me so far for not... Germany in the rain for not giving me good... Good car. Oh yeah, you can get really fast times with any car. But... Some cars are a bit better and considering that I'm going to have... About 45 minutes with this car. I'd like to be able to get to grips with it... Within 10. And some cars are just better than others. Also, I can't get fast cars, fast times in any car. So I need all the help I can get to. Uh... I fucking hope that that <laughs> if that picked up on the mic. I apologise. Yeah, it's the car's fault. Blame the mechanics. Blame the co-driver. I'm not saying what co-driver. Until that I say, exactly! I like how my GPU usage is less and my GPU is cooled down now. Because we're playing in the rain and the render distance is less. You know that thing in Silent Hill where it's all foggy and that? <laughs> and like on a lot of PS1 games actually. There might be a reason for that.
Tell you what I need to put on my uh, doodad. I've decided to call the uh, emulation machine a doodad. I need to put Rayman on. The reason I thought of Rayman after I said Silent Hill and a lot of PS1 games, um, and I thought of a game that doesn't have that fog effect, is the fact that I was trying to think of a game that didn't have the fog effect. Because all the games I could think of have the fog effect. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day right in front of you, but it's about really foggy about uh, just over the fields. In the in the downhill race mountain bike racing game that I was playing, it's weird. And then it's beautiful sunshine off in the distance again. It like suddenly goes foggy just off the track, so that they can blur out the fact that there's nothing behind the barriers. Uh, but then it goes to skybox, which is just PNG, so it comes back in. It looks, to be fair, it looks fantastic when you're playing. It really does. It's one of those. I do know Lonely Mountains Downhill and I really should sell a couple of CSGO cases and buy the game. But I have not yet done so. It may replace Art of Rally if I ever do, though. That's the only thing, because apparently it's kind of a time trial -y mountain biking game. Drove you like ass. Yet sure if I like Mango Hood being up there. It's kind of nice, but on the s at the same time, I I really wish I could have it as an overlay rather than baked into the game. But I'm pretty sure it has to be baked into the actual real game to work. Like it can't just be an overlay because I'd be fine. Nothing there, in theory. Nothing that's in that. Um, in that screen other than the FPS has to has to be there right has to know what the game is doing other than the FPS it should still it should just fine be able to pull my CPU and GPU usage and temperatures because I wasn't even going to use Mango Hood, but it turns out for some reason I can't get GPU temperature in system settings and system monitor from my computer. I can get CPU temperatures, but um, only GPU RAM usage for some reason. Can't get temperatures. So I installed the Hood overlay to see if I could get temperatures out of that. And it was like, yeah, here's some temperatures. I should probably turn off the power usage actually, that would be a good one. If I turn if I turn the power usage on the GPU off, because I don't actually know what it means and don't care, then I could have percent usage and that and it'd be slightly smaller. Run B top as an overlay. What's B top? Is that like H top? Ah. To be fair, I could probably program a <laughs> I could program a GUI application that is literally just one pixel on the screen, borderless windowed, uh, borderless yeah, borderless windowed mode, one pixel on the screen, 
set it to launch with KDE launch options that set it to always on top. Set it to have... No, that wouldn't work. Set it to be completely transparent. <laughs> Full screen, overlay. No, because then it wouldn't collect any clicks, would it? Hmm. Be difficult because it it won't be able to, I won't be able to click it in it. I assume actually that's why they do it. Why it's not an over, why it's an overlay because you can't get because click through is quite difficult to do with these sort of things to have them just exist and be clickable through. But obviously if it's if it gets baked in as part of the game, then they're able to do it. See, you've just latched on to the fact that I, once when I was younger, tried to make things GUIs because I could. Because, like, have you not gone through a stage where you just did... You didn't think whether you should, you just did things because you could. And I say this knowing you have made a program that worked perfectly fine in Python, completely rewrote it in Rust, and saved a tenth of a, uh, a hundredth of a second. That's true. Yeah. You you can put ten years of uh, GUI dev experience on your CV now. TK Int is so weird because it's like actually I can't wrap my head around it. I think it's because I when I first learned GUI programming I learned it from the process of that definitely picked up on the mic, didn't it? There's no way that didn't pick up on the mic. Um, there's no... I learned it from the process of you have a UI file in XML and you have a... Um, in XML or something and you link to that and TK Int is complete. Like, TK Int feels like you just make it on the fly. But I think that's just because it's Python and it's generally used for hacking things together. You definitely, almost certainly could build it. But when I used. I, I actually found it easier to program with uh, Q, PyQt. I found it easier to program that using the Qt designer to make something turning that into a Python script and using that, using an entire external thing to run the UI and linking to that other file, I found that made more sense to me. Even though I know I could have split them in my head by just doing defs. I could have split them. My computer is running a lot less fan speed right now than it usually is when I'm doing this, so I think dusting it out might have been the best thing to do. Windows API and C++? Oh yeah, I've done that before. The, the funniest one was I spent such a long time at school trying to learn C++. Um, so I learned... The way I learned Python was I used to write Python at school, take it home, and then repair what I'd written. And I, sp I would spend like an hour in the evening fixing the Python code that I'd written at school. I didn't know very much Python at the time, but we didn't actually have a way to run Python properly at school. All we could use, we could use, if code would just run and didn't require any input, we could do it. But when code required an input, we weren't actually able to validate. We, all we could do was validate that the syntax was correct. That's all we could do. 
because that's all that the web interpreters that we could find at the time would let us do. Also, we didn't know the difference between Python 2 and Python 3, and that always confused us. Because some of us installed Python 2 and some of us installed Python 3. And Python on the Raspberry Pi at the time, I believe if you were in the console and you typed Python, it would launch Python 2. I believe like all the default Python and it was specific you had to specifically run Python 3 to get Python 3 at the time. Oh god, it was a mess. I mean I still I mean print was different. Yeah. Oh god, it was it was a nightmare. And the, the thing was, we didn't really have much of a choice because it was an era where Python 3 was relatively well well released. But guides were still being released for Python 2. Everything was still there for Python 2. So you learn how to do something and it's in Python 2 when you learned how to do it. And then it was different in Python 3. Let's see. Get user input Python 2. That was it. You used to have to specify raw input, and I remember constantly changing between raw underscore input and just input. For so long, depending on whether I'm fixing code. So half the time I'm running code at school, figuring out if it's worked. Most of the time, these things were just quizzes, by the way. Um, I spent some. I took a laptop to my nana's uh, 75th. It probably would have been birthday, and I. Um, I wrote a Python script that asks you, is it your birthday? And if it's your birthday, it said happy birthday. Uh, it was very simple code. And do you know what? It would hang if you didn't type yes or no. Because I programmed it to accept only yes or no. There was no else. So it would just kind of... What I should have programmed would have been much simpler. Or it w no, it wouldn't hang, it would just exit, of course. But it would just do nothing, rather than saying, Oh, I'm sorry, it's not your birthday. What I should have done is just put if yes. Else. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, I, I did all. I've seen some code from when I was writing that sort of stuff. I did that shit all the time. I didn't understand the importance of else, so I would put so many potential answers. We also didn't know how to do or. I, I, I don't know at what point I learned how to do or in programming. So we would put if yes. And then underneath it, we would copy paste the same code and put if yes, but spelled differently, and if y, and if capital Y. And then underneath that would be no, and n, and capital capitalized no. Now, if you capitalize the whole thing, put it in all caps, that was a fail. It didn't work, and it, it would just skip. And the best part about this is that so I wrote a program that made that was a quiz and it was nested if statements it was literally programmatically nested if statements because and it just went through and through and through and so you had like 10 I think it was only like five it was five questions but that means that you had 25 of the same code I hadn't learned how to do defs yet either, so there was no way that I was going to be like, D 
define question one that would have saved me some code. And I guarantee you there were parts of it, because I still do this to this day. Copy pasting stuff? No. I'm going to look at it and I'm going to hand write it again. Looking at it. I've made spelling mistakes in YouTube videos doing that. When I rewrote the country thing, there are multiple lines in there that I rewrote by hand instead of copy pasting them. When I added countries instead of just groups. The whole fun the whole final function is handwritten rather than copy pasted in that file. So yeah, I still do that today. Yeah, who needs classes? I literally didn't learn about what... Do you know what? I didn't learn classes in Python until after I had written an actual iOS app and deployed it to the iPhone store. At which point I found out death in Python is funk in Swift. And it blew my mind when my boss at the time told me that. I was literally like, you are. He saw a Python script I'd written to like automate something quickly. And he was like, oh my fucking god, what the hell? I hired you? <laughs> How do you write such good... He was also like, why didn't you do it in Swift? And my genuine answer to that was basically, I've never actually been taught how to program Swift. I effectively know how to program iOS apps happening to use Swift, but using Swift outside of iOS apps didn't actually have a clue how to use anything that would require um, that I, I wouldn't be able to do anything with it because I didn't know how to do file IO that didn't didn't involve getting the iOS uh, imports so it's much easier to use Python I'm pretty sure it was something for Git, which means I should have done it in Bash, but I didn't know Bash at the time. Didn't know shell scripting. Because uh, the Mac was my first... What's it? Uh... Swift is syntactically like Java, but better. But system-wise, it's C. It's Objective C based because Swift can Swift interprets to Objective C, which is then compiled by LLVM. I think is the right word. It may not be the C compiler that isn't GCC. that one. The one that Apple develops. Clang, that's it. Yeah. So yeah, Swift interprets to Objective-C. You can literally define a function that says uses Objective-C code here. And I learned when you're programming on, I don't know if they've ever changed this, and I, it's Apple. I highly doubt they have. You could do anything in Swift for an iOS device. You had to dip in, if you were making something for uh, Mac OS native, you had to dip into Objective-C so often. It was ridiculous how often you had to dip into Objective-C. I fucking... I only ever wrote one uh, OS X app other than like a practice learning how to use it app. Um, yeah. You may have thought about C Sharp. C Sharp is Microsoft's attempt at uh, Java. Where it's sort of interpreted. There's a, a middleman of a compiled... It's a compiled inter, uh, middleman interpreter. But it is still 
rendered down into bytecode, so it's not quite, but it's very easy to get it back from. It's not quite machine code that it's compiled to, so you can run it on anything as long as you compile the interpreter. Run the same code on anything. But C sharp is C sharp's biggest problem is like you can't you can't build a programming language to take out Java without dealing with Java's first selling point in the installer. Write your shit once, run it anywhere. Unfortunately, by the time Microsoft properly delved into uh, into dishing out C Sharp, they'd already extended extinguished, ex embraced extended extinguished uh, Java a little bit. Microsoft are the reason that you that people hate Java. But yeah, .NET, and then they tried to release .NET Core alongside their We Love Linux. And it didn't really work because half the shit didn't come across and it still didn't make it possible to develop apps cross-platform. Cross Rust is really cross-platform though, like honestly. Because I think the main reason that Rust is so cross-platform is because Rust is so self-contained. As long as you can get the Rust compiler to run on your system, Rust will run. Yeah, oh yeah, and cross-platform compiling is like straight up included in cargo. Do you even have to download the Windows compiler? I'm pretty sure you could just like run it with commands when you type cargo build. That's one of the things I love about Rust as well. No bullshit that you have to download extra on top of everything else to do everything. Like every other programming language I've ever used, you have to download something else, some other program like Make or something like that to be able to actually make it work and then you have to get the libraries the thing that downloads all the libraries for it and then you have to get this and that and that and, that, and it's like fucking hell and cargo's just there like yeah I'll do all of it I'll compile it all also hey do you want to use the web version the, the online version of a crate you do that do you want to use your own personal downloaded version of a crate? Just point it to a local working directory. You don't have to point this to a web address. You can point this to a local working directory if you want to. Do you know what else you can do? You can use it once, pointing it to the online crate, and then you can point it to the uh, local working directory and that, that it just downloaded meaning that it will never then update which is great but I did do something horrendous with cargo once I had um, I had it effectively an entire repository for updating cargo packages because I thought it was so cool that I could point them at uh, at anywhere like that and I had an entire system like to update basically I would build this one project to update the packages that I was using in another project which is ridiculous and absolutely abuse but I can tell you right now if I find that project on my system I guarantee you it still compiles whereas it probably won't compile if I update the packages that code's running isn't it no, it's not anymore. That's fine. It was an IRC bot. 
I was slightly worried that the code is still running. Somewhere. S somewhere on some server somewhere or on my computer that the code's still running. But no, no, it's definitely not. Because I never had it to reboot on relaunch. Because it was just a bullshit bot I made for a bit of fun. And to learn Rust. It was good. I never built a GUI in Rust. No, I did. Tell a lie. Uh, I wanted to try and get the... Um, I wanted to try and get Godot Rust working. And the only thing I built in Godot Rust was a menu screen. Because I just thought, oh, if I can whip up a quick menu screen. Menu screens are quite good when you want to learn a new game engine. Because learning new physics engines is difficult and learning how physics works. And you'll be, you can guarantee you will be pissing around for ages trying to get the physics to feel good. And for something to, like, work within your game. But there's so many things that have to be correct for you to even get anywhere. Like, you have to jump and then you've got to get the ground right and then you've got to get... Du are you having double jumps? Are you having single jumps? How are you doing that? How are you resetting with grounded? Yada yada yada. Uh, but if you just make a UI, you are guaranteed to be hooking something from somewhere else and picking bits of information from the from the scene and you can make it so that um, you change scenes or whatever your engine is going to call them but pretty much all of them that I've ever used call them scenes so you can just change scenes you just put forwards and back buttons on the scene and then you have a button that does the same thing in two places and you don't do what little kid me would do which is copy paste that same code to the next scene you have a reference so that it always does the same button so that if in future you have some settings boxes they are pulled from the same place so you know you've always got your main menu button that sends you back to the main menu and that just calls the main menu function Because that's slightly more fancy than what you're actually doing in the main menu function, which is scene.load menu.lsn. Is it lsn? Menu.whatever it was. For Godot. You know what? Fuck you. Build you a GUI. That's why you use i3. Are you playing uh, Art of Rally in ASCII text? What sort of frames are you getting on Art of Rally ASCII edition? Lads on TTY2 with Art of Rally. Is that a roguelike? <laughs> no, it's not a roguelike.
Dungeon Crawl Stone, Stone Soup. That's a good game. That's a good game that so many people don't know they've played. And I like annoying people. Because Pixel Dungeon is based off of Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Um, I like to annoy people playing Pixel Dungeon on their phones by going, Oh, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. That's a good game. Alright, like, what the fuck? I hope I'm correct in that, because I've been making that assumption and telling people that for ages. So I hope that... It has just dawned on me that potentially Pixel Dungeon is its own thing, not based on Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. But there are a lot of Pixel Dungeon. I know that that's open source because there's basically everyone just fucking redumps it online with a slightly different asset pack. I can never get very far in that game though. Oh, I hear you. I'm sorry, oh. And Dwarf Fortress? Not a fucking chance. So, I'm doing an extra speed run at the minute. Uh, this is a speed run to hit every Hinkelstein in Germany. Do you reckon the speedrun category is hit every stone in uh, in Germany? Is it faster to do every stage once or twice? So you do every stage once and you hit every hit every Hinkelstein both sides, or you do it twice? And you hit all the ones on the left one stage and all the ones on the right. Or you do the stage in reverse and hit all the ones on the right both times. Because you can definitely just scrape every stone, right? But then you'd have to go back and do it again on the other side. So I reckon it'd probably be faster to do it two stages. Because otherwise you're effectively... Like, your best bet is going to be to drive up a bit of road, drive back down a bit of road, but then you're at the start of that bit of road again. But I reckon that's faster than trying to go 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two each side. Never use Windows Command or Macbook. Yeah. Macs are the gateway drug. To, uh, to the terminal for a lot of people was for me everyone talks about Max UIs but there's like I know multiple people who love Max because they have the terminal Oh, Mac is all about the aesthetics and the UI. Right. Yeah, Turbo, get it out. Hinkelstein percent. No, I'm not doing a run on it. That would be so tedious to judge as well. You would literally have to be there making sure carefully every single Hinkelstein's been hit. And it's going to be like an hour long run. Of actually just driving. Oh, and what do you do about the ones that are behind the, the line? No, 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 no. I just pressed continue. That says leaderboard local. 
I hope that uploaded. I think I'm going to have to go through uh, at the end and there will be some times that don't have um, that didn't that got local times as I've been going through where my internet dropped or the servers went down for a little bit every stage every group driving in reverse Fuck off, don't make me do this shit again. It's going to take me eight months by the time I finish this. I'm not going to be able to do it reversing. No, that printout missing stages script won't even work for this. Because it will be filled in in the leaderboards.txt. Because it's local stages going there. So I'm only going to notice it when I go through the entire collection. By the way, people are going to be able to cheat our, um, our incredibly robust system of checking the stage times for each group. Because all they've got to do is go in and set a bunch of them to zero. And like the only thing we can possibly do to defend... Like, to defend against the, there's nothing we can do to defend against it to be fair because you can't say oh you can't have it if it's faster than the world record even if we check the world record via the api we can't say oh you can't have it if it's faster than the world record because there are people who've set legitimate world records offline Yeah, detect cheated TXT files. Yeah, I think it comes down to can you um, can you trust the guy that you're comparing against has actually done? Because it's not like someone couldn't just have a look at the output of our TXT file thing and write a piece of code that just prints whatever you want with the same formatting like how hard is that how hard is it if you really wanted to right now this second considering that the this is where Rust would come in. We could give the people the Rust program, and then they wouldn't have, they wouldn't be able to change the code. But um, if you took the took the file and you wanted to, you could just change that last, the very last line to print 1920. <laughs> That's all it would need to be, because right now it just prints how many stages you have done. You just change it to print 1920, and then you're really quick. Because you've only done however many stages. 800, 900. Yeah, but who wants to cheat in this game? Surely. Scholar's actually been pretty nice to drive 
to be honest. Especially for rain. It's been nice getting a decent car that actually goes quick and handles pretty well uh, for Germany rain. Because the last two have been kind of shit. I can't even remember them, but they've, they were pretty brutal, I remember. In group two and three. How harsh would it be? I... Hmm. So tomorrow, I might wake up, because I wake up pretty early. I'm going to bed straight after I finish this one. Wake up. Get a run in, which would be Kenya. Then run. Then probably go out and do some stuff. Then run... Indonesia and Australia in the afternoon. I've got like a proper grind on with this game right now and I need to use that. The fact that when I sit down and I go, I want to play a game, it's this. I need to use that while I'm happily streaming and happily doing this sort of thing. Because one of the things that made it so difficult for me to get back into this, uh, or to be, when I was not doing this for a little bit. One of the reasons I wasn't playing for a little while was because I've got to like set up the stream and I've got to do the whole... I can't just... because of the way I'm doing this with the speedruns, I can't just jump on for two or three tracks, get bored, go off, do something else, come back. I've got to dedicate myself for, you know, 50 minutes an hour in the case of a, a long one like this or Kenya more when I'm doing two at a time but it's been pretty chill I very much have to thank you Fairlex for mostly being around when I'm streaming because it does genuinely make a big difference having having a reason to talk that sometimes talks back is honestly one of the best things when you're streaming because otherwise you just you give up talking to yourself and you don't say anything. And you don't say anything for ages. And then you kind of half fall asleep and that's a problem. Oh yeah. Just, I mean, I'm just uh, talking shit the entire time as well. But I've talked shit all day. You come home and talk more shit. Like, look at out. Spent all day talking shit with people. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I mean, depending on what's on, if there's any... The thing with the morning ones is it... It'll probably... I'd need to possibly get into doing it in the morning. Because doing it in the morning could be good for me. Because there's nothing on in the mornings. And it'll give me a reason to like start doing stuff rather than just moping around for hours of end. Because I don't like mor mornings, especially on weekdays, I don't want to go out because I don't want to deal with rush hour traffic. I don't want to. But there's like no streams obviously in the mornings. So I could be that streamer. But there's a reason nobody streams at that time, and it's because no fucker is around at that time. Shit. Huh. Have fun. It would depend what time I wake up, because I want to go watch the running race that's kind of nearish to my house. Why am I getting home? Okay, yeah, I'm getting home. I'm stupid. I just realised, because they close the road, and so I'll cycle over, and then they'll close the road that goes back to my house. So I'll watch the ball run off, and then won't be allowed to go home. <laughs> 
And I thought, shit, but if I just go the long way around town. Be good to get out, keep my legs spinning, but I don't want to do much tomorrow. I want a full... Tomorrow I want a full rest day and then we'll get back on the beans Monday for a decent ride. And then Tuesday will probably be fucking brutal. I might just make Tuesday really brutal and do some BMX racing. And then go out in the evening with the fast lot of riders on the road. Just absolutely fuck it up. Right then, sick. That's a 43.23.292. Cheers, Turbo! I can't believe how few stages I'm winning now these days. <laughs> but it's getting... it's working.